It's been said that a workshop is a reflection of the maker, and if that's true, then I have a major problem with my workshop. I, as the maker, think it's boring which I don't want to be a boring maker, so let's go on a quest to fix that. So we have two things we wanna tackle. Number one is to make my shop more functional, and number two is to do it in an interesting, cool way. A lot of folks are gonna be familiar with these rolling tool cabinets that are available at just about any big box store. It's gonna help us as we need to put things somewhere while I shift around some of the other organization in my shop, so let's unbox that now. is all assembled and ready, so that takes care of all the functionality that we really need, but it's still boring. So let's make it interesting by theming it kind of after a dystopian workshop type thing. A couple things that I wanna do will actually enhance the functionality of this a little bit, like adding a wooden top up here. We're also gonna add an Imperial logo right here, and we'll come back and do some other stuff to it later. But first, let's get that logo on because the Imperials would have this looking clean. I'm in my home office now because I'm gonna use my laser to cut out a stencil to put the Imperial logo on the side of the rolling cabinet. Now, if you don't have a laser, don't worry. You can also use something like a projector so you can trace out the image or tape it off, which is exactly what I did when building this desk, and it worked really, really well. The laser is just gonna save me a little bit of time and let me spray paint it. Okay, slight change of plans. I'm back from the hardware store with more material and some spray paint that I'm gonna use to give this thing a different paint job before we put anything on it. And that should give us a good base that we can layer on top of and really make this thing look cool. Now that the cabinet and some of the laser cut pieces are all painted, I changed my mind about what I want to do a little bit. I designed some bigger panels on a piece of cardboard that I'm going to put on the sides, and we're still going to use those smaller laser cut pieces on the front of all those drawers. I am going to use some hardboard for it because I actually like the texture that the back of the hardboard has. I'm hoping that that will add to some of the kind of weathered features that we're going to see. Now that the paint's dry, we can put the panel under the rolling tool cart. And I've already taped off the offset from the top and side so that everything is centered. To apply this, I'm gonna use some tape to keep it in place, and then some five minute epoxy, and then some Gorilla Glue to try to keep it secure long term. dries, I'm going to go ahead and do some more spraying because I got a little happy with my laser and decided to print out or cut out some letters as well. For these, I've got some scoring for where the letters are going to go, but I also cut out some raised letters that I'm going to glue on top of there. I left the masking on these so that it will mask out the paint. It will give me a good glue surface, but it will also kind of tell me where I need to put the letters because I can't actually read this. I also decided to cut out some of these grids because what is Star Wars without one of these funky oval grid things? Alright 
good news and bad news. The good news is I'm really happy with how the black matte turned out and the glossy white on these pieces that I laser cut. I'm gonna start gluing those together in just a second with some super glue. The bad news that I'm gonna try to make fine is all this glue squeeze out from the Gorilla Glue that I didn't anticipate. Because this is dystopian, I'm gonna try to make it fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. The way we're gonna make it fine is by trying to make this part of the build somehow. What I'm currently thinking is that I'm gonna paint this to make it look like rust or leaky fluid or something like that. But let's glue that up first. I think I managed to overcomplicate that just a little bit and really overdo some of this, but we'll see if I can salvage it when the weathering happens. Hopefully. The tool cart's actually looking not really where I want it to be right now, and that's because we still have to weather it, but that's gonna have to wait until next time because I've got something special in mind for the weathering that I'm really excited about and I'm gonna try for the first time. So stay tuned and I'll see you then. 